We've had several requests to do an episode on the reinfection rates of COVID-19. If you've been infected with COVID, can you expect to be immune now? Or is there a chance you could get it again? That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. This video was created in part through the support of viewers like you through patreon.com slash healthcare triage. People are wondering whether an infection with the new coronavirus provides them lasting immunity. If they were unlucky enough to be infected, but lucky enough to come out relatively unscathed on the other side, are they free to live their lives without fear of the virus now? To the research! A paper published in The Lancet in October discussed the reinfection of a 25-year-old male in the United States. This individual presented with symptoms once in April of 2020, and then again in June of 2020. He tested positive for the virus in April, negative on two tests performed in May, and then positive again when tested in June. The authors also reported that for each infection, the virus showed significant genetic differences, suggesting that in each instance, it was a distinct, separate infection. However, the fact that we're publishing single cases like this points to the fact that reinfection seems to be a rare occurrence. As of October 27th, this is the stance of the CDC, and data available after this date appear to confirm. According to an October New York Times article, of the millions of people worldwide that had contracted COVID by that time, less than five were confirmed reinfections. The article also notes that in most of these cases, though not all, the second infection resulted in either less severe or no symptoms. It's important to note that this could result in reinfections being underdetected and or underreported. Another factor that may contribute to underreported numbers is that many people don't get a test for even the first infection. This was especially true at the beginning of the pandemic when testing wasn't all that widespread. And even for those who did get tested, their sample likely wasn't preserved. This is important because scientists need to analyze the first and second samples in order to determine if an actual reinfection occurred. The reappearance of symptoms could be related to the first infection, even if an individual appeared to have fully recovered at one point. A preprint from December, meaning a paper that has not yet been officially peer-reviewed, may provide more insight. Using antibody and PCR test data from over 3 million people, remember the PCR tests look for evidence of a current infection, researchers report that individuals with positive antibody tests are much less likely to have a positive PCR test later on. The furthest time point examined in the study was less than 120 days, meaning we have some evidence for decreased risk of reinfection for somewhere close to six months. It's not 100% protection, and we don't know if it wanes over time. Another study published in December examined COVID infections in healthcare workers and found similar results. Any spike antibody status was taken for each worker at baseline, and they were then followed for up to 31 weeks. Anti-spike antibodies specifically respond to the spike protein on the surface of the virus, the same protein targeted by the vaccines. Whereas 223 workers with no anti-spike antibodies later tested positive for the virus, only two workers that tested positive for these antibodies had subsequent positive COVID results. Interestingly, both of these workers were asymptomatic, meaning they were infected but not ill. Reinfection does occur with other diseases and may happen for a few reasons. It could be that the first infection wasn't strong enough to produce a sufficient immune response, so the immune system wasn't ready to fight off a second round. Reinfection risk may also be higher in individuals whose immune system is already compromised. So to recap, the data suggests that reinfection is possible but rare though numbers could be underreported, and while we're aware of a couple factors related to vulnerability to reinfection, we aren't quite able to determine individual risk. And do keep in mind that it is possible to get reinfected, have no idea because you show no symptoms, and still pass the virus to others. And on a final note, what does all that mean in terms of the vaccines? There's still a lot to work out, but we do know that vaccination provides a more reliable immune response and is safer overall. Does vaccination produce a stronger immune response than natural infection? That's the case for some, but not all vaccines. There is some evidence that COVID-19 vaccination produces more antibodies than natural infection, but there's not enough evidence yet to say for sure. While antibodies are definitely produced via natural infection, their levels vary pretty widely between individuals, meaning some people may only be protected for a short period of time. 
As for the vaccine, it produces a reliable immune response, but we need more data to know how long immunity will last. Importantly, the potential risks of natural infection versus those of vaccination are no comparison. It is much safer to get the vaccine, which does not contain live virus. And yes, this is true even if you are young. One study in JAMA Internal Medicine reported that in 3,222 COVID patients between the ages of 18 and 34 who were hospitalized between April and June of last year, 21% required intensive care, 10% required mechanical ventilation, and 2.7% died. I personally would rather not take the chance of being one of those statistics. While we await more information, the most important thing to hang on to is the now familiar refrain about best practices. Keep your distance from others, wear a mask, and wash, wash, wash your hands, even if you've already been infected. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode about vitamin D and mental health. We would especially appreciate it if you liked the video down below, maybe subscribe to the channel too, and go on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show even in a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our surgeon Admiral Sam.